Today I've got the Sony Magic Link. This is the PIC-1000, it's the Sony Personal Intelligent Communicator, and this was one of their attempts to get into the PDA market, and it's actually reasonably powerful, and it does have quite a few features. It's similar to the Newtons in that they kind of packed in a whole bunch of stuff into it, like uh, it has an infrared connection, it's got a built-in modem, which is a nice feature at the time. It has both a telecom and a magic port connector, which are both proprietary and under this rather flimsy little plastic cover. There's also a microphone and a really filthy screen. This thing refuses to power up, by the way. I've tried using a standard MP NPF battery because it seems to be the right connection for it and it does like lock in but I just can't get it to boot up or do anything, nor does uh, wiring into its DC input jack do anything. So mine appears to be totally dead. And there seems to be like little bits of corrosion on this or something. So I'm not sure if the inside is like completely ruined. The unit has a backup battery, which has a nice little red retention system in order to protect the internal memory. When you insert a standard battery, it moves it out of the way so you can replace the little three volt lithium battery without it wiping out the internal memory because it's SRAM, not flash. So without memory, without power, it just dies. On this side, there's a simply a power switch, contrast. No, that's not what the problem was. I've tried the contrast and a little pen release. It's got a simple stylus that conveniently stores inside. And yeah, it's uh, just a cheap plastic stylus and a little release for its single PCM CIA card slot. This particular one came with a whole one megabyte of SRAM, which was probably very expensive at the time. These SRAM cartridges were not cheap. And this is just a type one card, not a type two card. Most PCM CIA cards are type two. They have a little bulge on them. This is the thinnest card you can get. And this one happens to be made by Panasonic. And a feature of all SRAM cards, a battery. Because just like the internal memory, it needs power. And most operating systems, well, at least with my experience with, with Newtons, is that when you insert a card with a low battery, the operating system will tell you. I'm, I'm fairly certain it did that at least. So uh, you'd be warned when your data on your card's about to die. They, they would last a long time. I think it was like years, but you still needed the battery in it. If you took the battery out for any reason, it would just wipe the card. It's also got a little speaker and a little crappy microphone. It's covered in this like rubbery stuff that's like peeling off. This is very common on older stuff like from the 80s and 90s. One thing I found that's really good at getting rid of this you can just remove the pla the the whole rubbery layer is if you hit it with a little alcohol in this case i've just got some isopropanol alcohol this is 99.9 .9%, but you don't need that high and then just give it a little bit of a rub it starts to come off and you can actually just start really scraping it and if you hit it with more alcohol you can really start breaking it up and you can just get the whole section clean okay no trouble at all you can just spend a little bit of time go through the whole over the whole product and it's good as new you lose the little rubbery texture but at least you're not getting little bits of crap i had a similar problem with my canon film camera my uh, elan 7e it had the rubbery stuff all over it and unfortunately it would leave black marks all over your hands so uh, i took it all off and it's been great so it's pretty useful to Get that stuff off because it does go after so many years. The inside just has some shielded ABS plastic. It's just metalized to give it a, a little bit of shielding. The very simple mechanism for keeping the battery safe is you push this forward with the main battery and it releases the other battery. It's just a sprung piece, piece of plastic. And on the inside, it looks like the layout is pretty straightforward. This is probably gonna be the CPU. It's just a little plastic pad over this. I'm not sure what that's for other than just prevent, oh, it's probably just to prevent it from shorting to the 
metal case. The small board just has the two ROMs for the Magic Cap operating system. And moving along, we've got the large PCMCA slot. <laughs> when you think about the size of a modern cell phone and the size of this, like look how much space this uses up just for this slot. There's this cute little spot spring mechanism that lets you push the battery in and then it will just kick it back out. The lithium battery compartment is a little separate module. Both batteries are connected through the same module. This uh, little board is handling, it's got a little fuse and stuff, it's handling the lithium battery. And although it may not have been a lithium battery when it uh, initially came out, this was probably a, a nickel metal hydride one or a NICAD. Underneath the main board, which I've taken out, we'll take a look at that in a second, there's a whole bunch of shielding. Again, lots of shielding. It's a whole, whole metal sheet here along with plastic to presumably keep it from shorting out to the main board. Uh, looks like this is a flat flex cable to the LCD. And then this is probably for the resistive touch sensor. All this board is doing is providing the little push button for the side. You've got these little option buttons on each side. The screen is just taped in in a couple places. Obviously the case does most of the work holding it together, but it is funny just seeing two small pieces of uh, scotch tape holding the whole thing together. So this is the outer, uh, that's glass. This is the outer touch sensor. And you can see there's just the four connections for the old school resistive touch sensor. And there's also all that crud I mentioned earlier. Ugh. It's the quite large sharp made display this handles uh four shades of gray and it's a 480 by 320 display so it's a pretty high resolution display for the time they've got little strips of black electrical tape running over each of these chip on flex ic's presumably to keep light out of them because silicon is affected by light so ic's can often be messed up by that. Here we have the main board. It is a very densely packed main board. Looks like we've got some options for different types of memory. These look like they would be for flash instead of SRAM. I'll have to look to see what these are. They, it's got to be SRAM because why would you have a battery backup keeping it alive? Nice little OSCOM solid capacitors. This is the main CPU which is a Motorola 68 Three four nine, which is a 68k variant and there's just tons and tons of stuff on this board this is extremely densely packed inside that can was it's just the electronics for the infrared uh, data transmitting stuff so there's a couple uh, chips that'll be handling that and a whole bunch of passives including these cute little these, are, these look like they're little electrolytic capacitors but they're designed to be surface mounted at 90 degrees and they come with like a little plastic container around them, a little holder. That's cute. I don't think I've seen those before. Wow, this is a very small component for the 90s. And yeah, this thing could handle uh, 38.4 kilobits, which was actually pretty fast considering the data rate of the modem was only 2400. Doing 38,000 was pretty impressive through uh, infrared. Uh, Newton's had a similar thing from Apple. They, uh, they used uh, an infrared system and they later switched to IRDA once that became a standard. So that whole thing was just connecting to the board using this little flex cable and it's been soldered through in a bunch of places and I just ripped it off the board. So if there's any damage to uh, chips around here, that's not the reason why it wasn't working. It's because I ripped it off the board. Little 500 milliamp fuse. It's nice. They're putting the, the ratings for all the SMD fuses on this thing. Moving along on the board, there's an RC224 ATF, which is the um, controller for the modem that's made by Rockwell made tons of modem related stuff. A couple large capacitors in the isolation transformer, DC input along with another 500 milliamp fuse. And the rest of this is just packed with tons of surface mount stuff, presumably interfacing with all these, uh, you know, magic ports and stuff. There's a bunch of protection diodes on that one. On this side, there's a Max 783, which is a triple output laptop power supply controller. You can tell it's a power supply controller just by the fact that there's MOSFETs and inductors and tons of capacitors everywhere. A whole bunch of diodes. 
this TS-117 made by CP Claire is a telecom relay. So this is the main CPU. It's an XC68349 running at 16 megahertz made by Motorola. Uh, chips are usually marked MC by Motorola. XC, I believe, are earlier samples. You do find them occasionally in released products, so I don't think this is anything fancy like a prototype. This thing's essentially a 68030 running at 16 megahertz. It's got some more integrated stuff, like it's got a DMA controller and uh, other components that are normally external parts. It's just, it's not quite a microcontroller because it doesn't have any memory or anything like that, but it's more integrated and designed for lower power portable systems. This other component is a Motorola XCT38044. Not really sure what this is, can't find any information. I assume it's a, and it like basically a bus controller to let it interface with things like the PCMCAA slot, which is essentially a ISA slot. So you're gonna need some hardware between the CPU and it. So this is probably handling that. And it's probably handling all the other functions like more serial ports and various connections to the other devices. Down here, there's a couple chips made by NEC. These have to be the main memory and it appears that there's just the two chips. So these have to be 512K each to bring it to the one megabyte of RAM that it's got. There's apparently four megabytes of uh, ROM on top of those, uh, on that daughter card for the operating system. It is just a packed board. I wish I could have played around with this thing, but it was completely dead and it's not really worth troubleshooting if it's that dead. I, I checked the fuses and stuff and they're all fine. So no idea it could have been fried at some point and 